رحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يبقه قولي ربي يسر ولا تعسر عليه إن شاء الله today we are studying the tafsir in English and the fiqhi tahara session in English my dear brothers and sisters who are sealing who are seeking the knowledge of Islam which is the most important knowledge that helps you to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always congrats to you that Allah guided you to this session this shows like how much Allah loves you the Prophet said والسلام, one of the hadith I will say both in English and Somali if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you the way that you recognize is إذا أحب الله عبدا استعمله if Allah loves or selects someone to love him or to love her Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala استعمله what does it mean استعمله the Prophet was asked and he said the Prophet عليه السلام يوفقه العمل الصالح so Allah will guide him the good deed like studying the Quran of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his sunnah, the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi sallatu wasalam, thumma yamutu alayhi, then he will die on that type of the deed, which is called like husn al-qatima. Ab Somali ilahi subhanahu wa ta'ala murka adonk jalado, wu shaka alayhi siyah. حديث كم يعني هيس حالي يا رسول الله محل الرجل ذا وش قال يسيا نبقى حروحوا فجيا عمل صالحة عمل إلهي وجعليها كده من عمل كاسو كل انتا مركا الله is guiding you to listen to his Quran كلام الله to listen the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the speech of Allah سبحانه وتعالى so let's study today سورة الزلزال أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم if you can make a bigger font, uh, the, uh, Sister Asma, insha'Allah. Uh, so, may Allah bless you. Thank you. That's enough. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا زُلُزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا إِذَا means like when زُلُزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ الْأَرْضُ is the earth. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so what, what it means here in general is Zulzilatil Ardu, when the earth is shaken. And Zilzalaha means it is ultimate earthquake. So this is the final one. When that happens, so the final shaking of the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lul garir ka ugudan bayi murku da'o. Wuhi alamat utahay adunkinu damadi. This is the sign that the world is ending. What will happen after that is wa akhrajati al-ardu adqalaha. Then when, so always the meaning here is like wa ida. So when that's what is hiding as a meaning. أخرجت الأرض the earth will produce and will bring out أثقالها whatever was in there. Some scholars they say what was meant here is like all the people that buried will come out alive. So that's one tafsir. The second tafsir is everything that inside of the earth will come out. The gold, the diamond, all types of the raw materials that were beneficial in this life will come out, but no, nobody wants to take it. 
It's the end of the world. This is the time of the accountability. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ When the earth brings out everything that was in there. When the earth throws, أَخْرَجَتْ means like, will throw out whatever was inside of the earth, whatever it contains, it will come out. So it's containing whatever in there, in the earth. The next ayah, ayah number three, when people see this, وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا People will talk. The human being will say what is going on. That's malaha means like what's going on. So they have never seen this type. So some scholars they say this is like the final uh, momentum of the world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing his power. So the people say what is going on. So and some people, they some scholars they say waqala al insanu malaha means waqala. Al-Insan, the human being, will say when they see all this big change, ma laha, so they, they, they are talking about the earth. What, what's wrong with the earth? Because the sheikh is not normal, and it was the one that they used to see. Then Allah says, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا يَوْمَ إِذِنْ On that day, on that day, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help us so to uh, cover whatever mistakes that we have done in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma idin that day, that day is the day of the Qiyamah, to hadithu akhbaraha. So here to hadith we are talking about the earth. The earth is talking. Akhbaraha, it is information, whatever the earth collected. This earth that I'm sitting on it, and you are watching me and you're sitting on it, you know what will happen? They say, we witness uh, Sheikh Hassan, who was teaching the Quran Tafsir on Sunday, 2, 3, 30, the Minnesota time, we were there. So the earth is talking. And they are saying like those who are listening, you are listening, people, on the Facebook right now, who are those who are listening uh, in the uh, Zoom, and everyone, you will have a good witness that never lies. That is the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The earth is innocent. Whatever you do on it, it will tell. So this ayah, Yawm Eden to Hadithu, is a scary ayah. This day is the, the day of scandal, Yawm al fatiha We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us those who will be under the fatiha, under the scandal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal by making the earth to talk, the streets, the road, the houses, the earth will come, the day of judgment, just to witness what we did it on it. So may Allah save us. Allahumma ameen. So that is Yawma Eden to Hadithu Akbaraha. Yawma Eden, that day, to Hadithu, uh, it will talk. Akbaraha, all its information, the earth collected, will come out. The earth will be the witness against us or for us. Now it's for us because we're doing something good. We're listening to the Quran. We're listening the, the the speech of Allah. We are practicing what Allah wants us to practice. Why the earth is talking? How this earth that cannot talk right now, it will talk in the day of the Qiyamah. Allah says, Your Lord, your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one that will make the earth talk. Aw halaha means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that talking to the earth and saying 
talk. Tell me what they did on you. Tell me everything. So that's why we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover the mistakes that we have done on the earth. So uh, the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is making the earth talk and witness and whatever they witnessed, we witnessed, they were reading the Quran, they were studying the Quran, they were studying as a group through the Zoom, the, through the Facebook, all this information collected by the earth and Allah knew already, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make this witness before everyone else. Yawma'id in that day, yasduru nasu ashtatal liyuraw a'malahum. People will come out. Yawma in that day. Yazduru nasu. People will come. So, ashtatan as groups. Liyuraw a'malahum. So here, liyuraw means they will see the result of the good deeds. Someone will have A plus in his salah. There is a sister that will have A plus with her hijab. There's a sister will have B plus with her hijab. There is a sister that will have C minus in her salah. So this is the the day of the result. So that's this ayah is one of the scary ayah that as Abu Bakr said. Look look those two ayat, last ayat. Faman Yamal, Faman whoever Yamal does Mithkala Dharratin the small size amount of atom of khayran of good yarahu he will see it or she will see it what's the small amount of atom let's say someone allah gave a favors of allah ni'mah and you are happy from your heart you did not do anything you did not say anything just you are happy because that person is enjoying with the favorites of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that happiness only, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you as a part of your good deed. Then Allah says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ The opposite. وَمَنْ whoever يَعْمَلْ did or does in this dunya. مِثْقَالَ dara The smallest amount or atom size of sharran or evil deed, Yarahu, he or she will see it. What's any small amount of evil deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you. So that's why Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when he was reading this surah, he said the two most scary ayah in the Quran are the last two ayah of Surah Al, -Al, 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 -Al Zalzala or Zilzala. This surah, the last two ayahs, as the most is carried ayah to every one of us. Because if you do like a small amount size of good deed, this is the fairness of Allah. Allah is fair. Allah will bring it out to the public. This is what you did. Any size of the good deed. So what do you think about the big good work that you do for the community? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then... So here where many people will be very happy. People of the good deeds, they will be very happy because they won't lose any tiny good deed that they did. And the people of the bad deed is scary for them because a small tiny bad deed they did, that will be shown. So let's do one more and then get the lessons. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. One more review. Ida when zulzila til ardu. The earth is shaken. Zilzalaha, it's final. Her earth quickening. So the final momentum that the world is ending. Waakrajatil Ardu and it will throw out of Kalaha whatever was in there. Whether it's like raw materialists or whether they are the human beings. وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا The human being will say that day, what's wrong with the earth? 
what's going on. And Allah says, Yawma idin that day, we're talking about here the day of the Qiyamah, to hadithu, it will tell akhbaraha, its stories, what you have done on it. Also, so here where we will study that the earth is one of the witnesses of the day of judgment. So the warning is don't, de don't do any bad thing on the earth. So there's a story of the one of the, that talked, one of the Salihin, and the story was that the person wants to commit sin. Then one of the Salihin said, if you want to commit a sin, find uh, an earth that does not belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do whatever you want. And the person said, but all the earth belong to Allah. And he said, if that's the case, Allah will bring all parts of the earth to the day of judgment to become witness either for you or against you. Ayah number five, بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, or Halaha is the one that instructing the earth to talk and witness and say whatever we have done on it, may Allah save us that day. Allahumma ameen. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ That day, يَصْدُرُ nas People are coming. أَشْتَاتًا Groups. So sometimes some scholars they say they are group, group. So each group that they were together, all singers, and music people and and and, and 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 singers of the bad songs and bad music they all come as a group so people of the salah people of the quran people of the those who study together the quran like us they come as a group and we will remember the days past I say like alhamdulillah allah brought us as a group we are lucky we are a group of good deeds why Allah brings us as a group? You people of the tafsir, of the Quran, come together and see liyuro a'malahu. So to see their deeds, the result of their deeds. Then we will be two groups. فَمَنْ whoever يَعْمَلُ يَعْمَلُ I mean, whoever does مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى مِثْقَالَ Darratin. Darra is like the smallest amount of anything, of khair if you do it, yarahu, so the person will see it. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ Whoever does مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ The size amount of the atom or the smallest sharran of evil deed, yarahu, the person will see it. So what is the conclusion of this surah? Follow, the following are the big lessons of the surah. One, there's no doubt that the day of judgment will come. Two, there are signs, big signs that you will see before the day of judgment, like the, earth, the earthquakes. And then three, the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk. So Allah will make the earth talk as we do talk right now. And we do understand even what they are saying. Four, the earth will be one of the witnesses of Allah, either for us or against us. So for that reason, we should avoid to do any bad thing on the earth. So five, Allah has the power to make everything talk in any language that he wants. Six, the surah talks also, people will be groups. If you are, always with a good good group Allah will bring you with bring you out from the grave with a good group if you are always with the bad groups Allah will bring you out from the grave with the bad groups and the last one and final lesson is never undermine any good deed because it will be counted and number seven lesson is never undermine bad bad deed never say this is a bad deed but it's small allah will forgive me don't say that it will be brought to the public in the day of judgment any question before we go to the fiqh class inshallah for the tafsir
Any question with the tafsir? Okay, let's start with the fiqh. Okay, sister. Uh, I think today we're starting wiping over the khuf. Am I right? Sister Asma. Yes, Sheikh. Okay. And we're on 1.7. 1.7, yes. Okay. Okay, it's three chapters. Let's go over those three chapters quickly. One is uh, wiping over the khuf. Khuf is everything which is strong enough that light water cannot go through. So even you can use it, the khuf, the, I mean, you can use, uh, I mean, the socks, the heavy socks as khuf. So how do you use that when you're wearing the khuf? So this chapter is conditions. The first one is the conditions. Faslun. It's the chapter. The first question is, is it okay to do wiping the khuf? The shoes that covers up to ankle is called khuf. Or any uh, uh, khuf, uh, basically they used that time like a type of the skin animal type of the shoe that they used to wear up to the ankle so it has to cover all the way to the ankle so to use that type of the shoe and to wipe it is jayiz means like it's acceptable in islam that's number one or permissible so bitharath is sharait three conditions must be fulfilled number one one begin is wearing them so means like and yep tadi'ya and yep tadi'ya the first one, one begins wearing them after being in a state or complete purification. After you do all complete wudu, then you can you will you will wear that khuf or that shoes or that socks. That's number one. After you complete the wudu. Number two. Number two, an yakuna saturane li mahal ghasl al fard. Both of both sock, uh, socks uh, must cover the area of the feet that is obligatory to wash, which means like up to ankle. So the hoof, the shoes, or the socks must cover all the way to the ankle. That's number two. Number three. وَأَنْ يَكُونَ مِمَّا يُمْكِنُ تَتَابُعُ الْمَشْيِ عَلَيْهِمَا The Shafi'i school said number three, which is like they are constructed such that it is possible to walk around in them. Means like it's easy to use for walking. Like it's, it doesn't bother you. So because you don't want to remove it. So one of the, one of the reasons that you are wiping is to keep it for 24 hours. But if, if you cannot walk on it, so that means like it's not the right shoes or the right hoof. So those are the three. Number one, quickly, one, before you put on the hoof, what you need is complete wudu. Number two, the hoof must cover all the way to the ankle. Number three, the type of the hoof that we are talking has to be the one that is easy to use it uh, to walk uh, with all the time. So, what are the per permissible duration that you're supposed to keep it, the Qaf with you? So that is chapter next, chapter 1.7.2. وَيَمْسُحُ الْمُقِيمُ يَوْمًا وَلَيْلًا Like me, I live in St. Paul in Minnesota, especially in St. Paul, so that's where the city that you live, the town, that where you count. If you are a resident where you live, you can wear the hoof or the socks 24 hours. 
that's the meaning of yom or layl. Well, musafir, those who are traveling, let's say like I'm going, I just came back from the trip for seven days. I was another state. So let's say while I was there, the state, I can keep the hoof of the socks for how many days? Means like three days and, and three nights. That's full three days. When you start, the timing is when you go to the bathroom, you take, uh, after that, uh, you take the mask, right? Because you already had a wudu. You go to the bathroom, uh, you lost the wudu, and then what you do is you wash all the body except the khuf part. When you reach the khuf, you're wiping. We'll see how to wipe. So so wiping timing duration will start when you go to the bathroom and do wudu. So instead of making washing the feet, you're not washing because you already put them uh, while you had a wudu. So what you do is like you wipe. So you wipe the top part only of the feet. Okay. Uh, uh, this is like rules that you, we need to discuss about. So here, very important rule. It says if someone who is a resident may wipe over Quf for up to 24 hours. That's what we talked already. If you are traveling, up to 72 hours. So the duration begins, we talked already from the point one, is when you lose the ablution after having worn the the, the, the Quf. So you had a Quf, lost, and then you make wudu. That time is the time that you start the wiping. So one completes the duration of a resident if. So you use duration of a of a resident if. One, wipes while resident, then travels. Okay. So you wipe while you resident, then you go to travel. Or wipes while traveling. So you were in the trip then becomes a resident. So you decide to stay. You decide to stay and live and become resident of that city. So in that two occasions, you make uh, the, the mask as resident. So let me repeat. Resident, we say 24 hours. You can keep 24 hours in two occasions. One, if you wipe while resident, than travelers. So right now I'm resident. Okay? So I made a decision to travel. Okay? If I travel, that hoof, that hoof that I have, it will be counted as 24 hours. Because when I wiped was when I had the near of resident. So that near counts as a near of resident even though that i went to the trip but after 24 hours is when you start your travel duration and the second one is you are traveling so you're supposed to count 72 hours but in the middle of tribe you made intention to stay and live there as a resident then you switch from traveling intention to the Resident intention, so you make it 24 hours. That's the meaning. So the final chapters, 1.7.3, is what breaks the wiping. So that's what we are talking only. The wiping only. What breaks? Three things breaks the the wiping. Number one, bikal. Ihima means when you, when you remove the shoes or the hoof or the socks, the wiping is gone. 
Okay, the why being is gone. Why we say the why being because there is a possibility that you might still have wudu. When qida al mudda, when qida al mudda means when the duration ends. Like for example, you were resident. This asr time, I started to wipe. So tomorrow asr time, that ending time breaks the wiping. Okay? Okay, number three and last one, وَمَا يُجِبُ الْغُسْلِ Whatever makes you to take a ghusl or bath or shower will make also break the wiping. So what's the exactly if women have a period time, the khuf, the wearing, I mean like the wiping of the khuf is broken, so she doesn't need any more to wear and to use it because it was broken. She has to wait the seven days of the period time, then take a shower. And whatever makes you to take a shower, like a wet dream and etc. So that, those are the most important uh, uh, rulings related to the wiping the khuf. And there, there, there were three chapters. One was the conditions. And then the other one was uh, the duration. And the last one is what breaks. And there is something that he did not discuss yet, which is how to do the wiping. How to do the wiping is like once you do the whole wudu and you come to the feet, you put the water on your hand and you do like this to make the, lat uh, the water like less wet. Then you, you wipe it on the top part of your shoes all the way to the ankle, so back and forth. And you do first the right feet, then you do the second feet. Allahu A'lam will stop there. Please ask questions if you have any question for the next five minutes. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you repeat the conditions that break the, the khuf? What breaks the khuf are three. Number one, we said, bihalihima means if you remove, if you remove the socks. Let's say that I had uh, for uh, two salah. Let's say I, 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 I put on the hoof uh, now, and then I went to the bathroom. I said, it starts, if you remember, it starts when you broke your, your wudu. After you broke your wudu, and then you make complete wudu. When you reach the hoof, you do wiping. When you wipe, that's the time. Excuse me, that's the beginning of the timing of the duration. So, uh, once you do that, you can keep it for 24 hours. Let's say like tonight before the four hours I removed the khuf or the shoes or the socks. Then it's broken. So if you wanna have it again, you have to make complete wudu, then you can put on after that. So number one is removing the, uh, the khuf or the socks will break. And number two, if the duration expires let's say as a resident the duration that i can keep it is 24 hours if 24 hours expires then you cannot keep it anymore because it expires number three is if something happiness like a wet dream that makes you you must take a bath or shower that uh, event of wet dream makes the wiping the shoes or the hoof uh, broken so you cannot do it you have to remove it okay any other question Okay. Um, Sheikh. Yes. The shoes have to reach the ankles to be considered yes. as khuf. Yes. The shoes has to reach the ankles to be considered. And by the way, 
you Canadians and uh, those who are uh, in America, uh, we use uh, a cough uh, most of the, uh, the, 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 the winter time. And it's good to, and the, those cough like they have, like it is a uh, skin or makar, or makar, and it has like a, a, a cover. I mean, like it has, uh, it, it, it was made like most of the time, a light type of the skin animal. So people ca can easily walk and even use with the shoes. But as I said, like shoes itself can be used as a hoof if it reaches to the ankle. The socks can be used uh, as hoof with two conditions. If it is heavy enough that light water cannot go through, that's number one condition. And number two, it has to reach the ankle. Those are the two conditions. Some people they add uh, must 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 not be worn. Uh, have like uh, no small holes. Uh, it's called they say like uh, no holes at all. So most, major, many scholars, but but some scholars they say if there is a light holes, uh, it is uh, it's excusable. But uh, to be safe side, uh, it shouldn't have or it it's must not have any holes your hoof or your socks those are the 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 the, the, the conditions of the hoof to wear it any other question okay bismillahir rahmanir rahim we'll make dua inshallah alhamdulillah salatu wassalamu ala ashraf mursalin sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us all this knowledge that we're studying every Sunday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to practice and not to forget, uh, especially the right time. Uh, the winter is coming, so it's the best time to buy khuf or to buy like strong uh, type of the socks that you don't have to remove it if you wipe it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the right path so we follow. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show, uh, show us the wrong path so to, to, to avoid it. Allahumma amin, Allahumma amin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.